How to learn Japanese with anime? Because of course you can. I'm here to tell you some tips and tricks about how you can actually learn Japanese and even as so far, also enjoy animes more. And I will also give you so far, you can enjoy other stuff, gaming, movies, so on, as well using this mythology this video here will be about. So I, for example, have worked on Call of Duty 2, uh, Black Ops 2, where I did localization of Japanese to English, or vice versa, more, I guess, both, but primarily English to Japanese would probably be more correct to say it. And so I was pushing that right, I get a lot of questions. I get a lot of questions, like every day I get a comment or two asking me, how are you speaking this Japanese? How did you learn Japanese? Or how are you watching this raw anime, right? Are you watching an anime with no subtitles, right? Okay, how, how are you doing that stuff, right? And so on. And the answer is basically, honestly, I learned it from watching anime. It's literally, it's the answer, because there's a lot of good animes, right? A lot of anime fans out there, right? You watch them in another language. Use amount of animes out there in the world, and you probably, like me, grab like, you know, Dragon Ball or something like that, right? And you're like, man, I want to learn Japanese. I want to be able to watch animes. I want to be able to understand what they're saying, right? And honestly, you just want to read hentai. Come on, we all know that's a real answer why you're here. You're like, I read all the hentai. What, what, what are they about? Yeah, I want to wait for them to be subtitled. Man, it's interesting. It's mom's in here. So anyway, I have some methods done, right? How I learned it. And I think the primary thing here, to be honest, is a little mean. But if people tell you that you can't learn a language, not just anime, but any language from watching this media, they say you're too stupid to learn it. And also implying, basically, that they are too stupid themselves, right? Because if you have to learn a language from watching its media, again, this can be done for anything actually, not just anime, you have to have a critical mindset, right? So the first point I'm gonna give you here is that you have to think about what am I hearing and so on, right? Um, but for, for example, then, I'm gonna quick example, and then we'll go into the much details and the metallic and so on, right? For example, Nico Robin in One Piece, right? One of the absolute waifus, right? One of the iconic anime waifus, best girl, you know. Uh, spoilers here, of course. She has the flower power, right? Hana, Hana, no me. Which means she has some kind of deep fruit power where she can blossom up, right? More arm and legs and so on. So I have a lot of friends that watch anime, right? Show you too, right? I have a lot, a lot of friends that watch anime, and so on. This is all One Piece, now and so on. And I'm almost confused when I talk to my friend, like, Okay, so what's the word for like flower in Japanese? And they're like, I have no idea. I'm like, but you want, yeah, like one piece. So I'm like, what power does Nico Robin have? And they're like, oh, it's the flower power. It's like, what is it called? And they're like, ah, I don't know. Uh, hey, yeah. So for me, right, that's like almost embarrassing, right? For me, if you ask me that, I could tell you every character's name, you know, power, right? Because I use my mind that critical thinking that as soon as I see a power, I'm gonna learn and memorize every power that is mentioned, right? And then I'm gonna think, okay, so her power is Hana Hana no Mi. There's like flower, flower, okay, flowers, okay. So now I've learned that the word flower, right, means Hana, right? And I expect you, at the end of the video, you should do my mythology, you should be able to memorize this thing and use different mythologies, right, to kind of remember, okay, how does it work and what's the word now for flower. Uh, the issue, though, of course, here, mainly in Japanese, uh, is that you can't learn to read with this. So my next video will be about how they learn to read Japanese. Um, so, for example, then, if I tell you that Blumma is Swedish for flower, I can now give you a book on Swedish, right? It's like, here, read the word here. And you can be like, oh, yes, Blumma, it means flower, right? But if I give a Japanese book, it's like, find me the Hana. <laughs> What's weird as I said Hana? You're like, I mean, I know Hana is flower, but I can't read it, right? So, so that's a, a lot issue here. This will be another video, but I think that's definitely the issue with Japanese. I don't think it should be any issue learning Japanese. It shouldn't be harder than learning like German or Spanish or French or whatever, like Russian or whatever. The harder thing is of course to learn to like, okay, what what are the words, right? what, what does it says, right? Similar to Russian, for example. In Russian, you have to, to learn Kyrillic, right? Which actually is very simple to be like one minute to learn. It's super simple to read Kyrillic, but you need to actually take that step, right? For example, in Kyrillic, P is a pi, right? So you have to learn that kind of methodology. And if you learn that, you can then read Russian words, right? But before that, that's going to be a, a block, right? And Japanese is much harder than that. So that's like a lot more complicated. But anyway, let's talk about how you learn to speak it at least, which is the first thing and the thing you need to watch anime, right? You don't need to actually read Japanese to enjoy anime, right? So the first thing that I use then is, of course, critical thinking, right? I am into the anime and I absorb the anime and there's a lot of its steps here, a lot of methodologies, a lot of devices I use, but primarily 
what I would say is that when I see a word on the screen, when someone is like, hmm, 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 that I read the text, right? And I think in my head, okay, she said like, asa gohan, and she's like, ah, oh, and then she's like, morning, or good morning. Okay, so it means like morning or breakfast or like, immediately in my brain, right? I'm thinking that, okay, asa gohan has something to do with like, uh, you know, the morning or the breakfast, something with that, that the team, right? That is literally how your brain has to work. So that's gonna be, I think, for the most people, the hardest step to actually accomplish, right? To be able to actually learn Japanese from anime, because you have to actually use that critical mind in your brain and always reflect and think about stuff that you're hearing. So I work with this thing uh, on a professional level, right? I'm like a UX psychology kind of guy, and I do lecture about learning and curves and usability and so on. So. But you have to actually learn here, genuinely. And I'm I, I got a harsh stop, so I can't give you like a three hour lecture here, but you have to kind of just learn how to, if someone says anything to you, always questioning it, basically, right? If someone tells me, this is how you calculate this thing in physics, I'm like, I don't know, why? Why is it like that? I'm also gonna be the super annoying guy, like, I'm, I'm in this thing, in this thing. And the benefit of that is when I have questioned this stuff, right? And I have learned to look at it, I'm actually going to accept that formula more than someone that's just like, okay, whatever, yeah, and you just kind of do it. I'm actually questioning it. I'm reasoning around why math or physical chemistry works like that, and then I have to do it. And the same thing with language. When you hear someone speaking Japanese and you have the text in front of you in the subtitles, you should be able to actually learn the words right. And I really mean that. Listen to the words, hear what they're saying. Maybe you won't learn, you know, the first time, right? But if you do it every time, for every anime you're watching, you should really pick up huge amount of vocabulary. Very easy, it's in a day, you should be able to learn a few hundred words, right? But I don't really mean that, you should be able to do it if you keep questioning everything you're saying. Right? And also then, you should use different kind of, you know, contextual stuff on it later. But for example, Asa Gohan, right? Gohan, what does that mean? Uh, Son Gohan, I recognize, Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball. What is Goha? Ah, it means rice, right? So you can, you should be able to also use your contextual language. I'm gonna come a lot more later, but still, that kind of stuff should be in your brain too, right? The second part of this video, I talk about stuff. how you can see words in a thematic context and be like, well, this thing means that thing. This means that thing. This thing must be that thing. Asa must be morning. Goha is food. Yeah. So you can, like, your brain should always think like that, and I think that's by far then the hardest step, right, to be able to actually learn Japanese from watching anime, because it really means you have to questioning everything you're watching, always in your brain, critical analyzing what is happening currently on the screen. Uh, and it's uh, it takes a lot of uh, training to some extent, but I, I think that what I say here, and I said by saying that, that you should always do this in life too. It will make you better at physics, it makes you better at chemistry and so on. And I think one reason then, this is an off shot from anime here, but if you ask me something I learned in like high school, like some high school physics, I still know everything I learned in high school. Yeah, I have forgotten anything because I was always questioning everything. I was like, why is the formula? Why is it that? Why? Look in the books. Why? Yeah. I was always very, very, I guess, cynical on everything, right? Maybe reflect over it, maybe questioning it, maybe think about it. Why is this thing saying this thing? Um, why people that just consumed it, right, have forgotten about it next day, right? And I think the biggest thing here, really honestly, is that. If you want to learn Japanese from anime, which is absolutely possible, I did, you can do it too, but you have to stop being a consumer. You have to actually stop consuming anime and actually l watching anime with your brain, right? Which sounds very harsh, but that's the truth though. That's the actual truth. You have to stop just assuming what's happening, do it. You have to actually be like, well, this thing is the one. And to be honest though, that will also help you memorize stuff in general, right? Like when I talk to someone, I haven't read like Naruto, watched Naruto in years, right? But I still remember everyone's power. I still remember everyone's name and so on. Because I was always learning the stuff when I watched it. I was, like, ah, power, this, this, this. I was always doing the memory, you know, tricks, right? To remember that stuff. It's very, very important to use, do it generally. And uh, it improves your memory skills for, as I mentioned, any other sub as well, right? Uh, including then, of course, language. And this is also true for, of course, other legs as well, right? So one thing I would say is, well, then, that it's actually somewhat easier to learn, though, uh, reading the vocabulary from actually playing games, right? So if you play something like a visual novel game, you will actually be able to a lot easier learn the language by seeing what they're saying, and then they are, you're reading it down slowly than an anime, because the core, in a visual novel game, you have a text coming, right? And then you see, you hear the words, and you can pause here, you can read the text, you can decide your, should I do X or Y? 
and also you can usually repeat uh, the language. It's even easier actually to learn Japanese from playing these kind of dating sim games and so on, right? Because it really actually um, slows it down for you a lot easier than an actual anime. And of course, you can take a break, you can think about it so on, right? Um, but again, then, right? So as a kid, I played that game, for example, that, right? And I played that game when I was, I think I was like 13 when I played BB. So when I played BB there, um, yeah, I, I was listening to it, right? I pressed the repeat button and it just have So that's even easier. That's even easier. That's even easier. Uh, much even even better than uh, uh, as I mentioned than, than um, an anime, but still. Um, the next thing that you should do is cognitive immersion and cognitive empathy, really. So what I mean by that is that you have empathy, right? Eros empathy means so actually empathy is probably like the most misused word ever, and also it's crazy. But basically, empathy is that how you can relate to someone, right, and feel what they are feeling. Where actually isn't really true. Empathy is more definition wise, is more I can understand what you are going through. That's empathy for reals. So empathy is a very misused word because people think that evil people don't have empathy, which is not, not great at all. Because you can be evil and have really good empathy, but you don't care about people, right? That's sympathy. So that's a different thing. And if you divide empathy, there's something called cold or hot empathy, or then usually better said cognitive and Emotional empathy. Cognitive empathy is understanding what someone's going through, but not actually caring about it. So, uh, for example, then typically a psychopath has a very high cognitive empathy. Right? They can understand actually what people are going through, but they don't care about it. Um, so, cognitive empathy then is also then a trait when seeing studies of all these things that the higher your cognitive empathy is, you can higher and easier like, understand fictional characters, which means that. If you see someone crying, right, or whatever, right, crying or sadness or whatever in an anime, and you cry as well as so on, that actually is your cognitive empathy making you cry, not your emotional empathy. While in real life, if your friend visits you, say, oh, my father just died, I'm very sad, and she cries, and you cry with her, that's emotional empathy, because you're feeling kind of that, um, that bond, right? Cognitive empathy makes you see an anime character, and you can put yourself in their shoes so much, that you can feel their pain, right, and their suffering. And as I mentioned earlier, I feel my method here of learning Japanese is a highly focused on cognitive empathy, right? Which also means that if you improve this skill set, you will also improve your anime in entertainment, in my opinion at least. But I think it's very true because by doing that, you also immerse with the character more, so you actually are enjoying like the comedy more, or you get more emotional over that scene or whatever, right? So I think that's very important here uh, to say that. Yes, this improves my way to learning Japanese, but it also actually improves my way of enjoying the anime itself. So I very recommend it, improving your empathy in this sense generally, right? Uh, but anyway, for example, then, when I watch something like, you know, One Piece with Sorrow, not only am I able to understand what he's saying, but because Sorrow is my favorite character in One Piece, it's easiest example here, I am very, very cognitively immersed, empathically immersed into Sorrow. Which means that not only, as I mentioned, do I understand him, but I can even tell what he's going to say, right? So when I read this text here of Sorrow speaking, there's no audio, in my head I can hear the voice actor. I can hear how he is going to say, how Kasuya Night Guy is going to say the Sorrow line. Because I've seen so much One Piece, so I, I know exactly in my brain, it's like, this is how it sounds, right? This is how it sounds. It's kind of similar to... If you hear a music track, I think a lot of people say, if you hear a music track and someone just stops the music right, because it's one of your favorite songs, and they stop the music like that before like the, you know, the whatever is happening in the music, in your brain, you can probably kind of feel this is coming next now. This is coming next now. Like, because you're so used to the next note, the next verse, it's gonna be this thing, right? It's the same with your team when someone speaks right. So when I hear Kasuyanaika speak, sorrow, I'm like, he's gonna say this word. He's speaking this way. So from that thing in my brain, I can be like, okay, how do I say this thing in Japanese? I'm like, well, I know how Soro would say it, <laughs> so you know. And But of course, I have a lot of different characters in my head, right? I have like 500 anime characters I can use. So that is Soro, but it's a great example of One Piece because it's a long going show. It's very easy to do the One Piece actors, right? Um, but that kind of empathy then, being the character, makes me have the vocabulary he has. And then I can say, well, I want to sound like Soro, but I don't know what words he would use, right? 
I know what word she would use. So I can take the words out and I can then construct a sentence, right, from combining those words because I know what the word means, right, how he would say it. In a similar way, if someone says, like, Ika like a mass, right, and everything, of course you learn that it means, like, you know, so that thing should always be in your brain, right, because you're into the character. So I really feel it's a very good way to just learn a huge amount of vocabulary by really immersing yourself into the character. And again, also then also improving your actual understanding of what they're saying and so on. Uh, so one technique I use then, uh, which I use a lot, and I hear people com even commenting on my videos, you I love this guy, does the Kaishan, uh, Mohi! I mean, I'm a huge Kaguya Sama fan. So it's a great example of what I mean, right? <laughs> Kaicho, Mohi! I must be doing the Mohi sound. Uh, so what I mean is, when I do a lot of my reactions, right? I do it because in the, I don't know, in the way I comedy, I come from the Swedish comedy culture where I'm from, doing this kind of parody voice thing is like a big thing. I don't know. As a kid, I like that, so I like doing that. You know, I changed my voice. My father does the same thing as well, so it's a comedy thing for me. I think it's really funny. Some people like my reactions, but haters, right? But I like it. I like doing that. Sounding like a Korean. When I watch the anime, I do that like Kaisho Mohi. Yeah, I do the sound right. Uh, but it's also a menotic device. It's because in the sense that every time I do that, I am remembering exactly how she sounds right. And I really try to use emphasize, okay, I am Kaguya in my hand, right? I'm like I'm Kobe Kaguya. Now. And I, in my head I can exactly hear how she sounds. And because I know that, that Kaisho means, you know, class president, right? In Kaguya Sama, because I because I easily remember the next day, this is the word she's saying, right? And Mohi is like, yeah, enough, yeah, so I remember those words, right? So by doing that thing, when I speak of the character, I know it's silly, but seriously, I've been doing this thing, so it's kind of fun, right? Because when I do it, my, my, my anime reaction videos, right? I do this like, catch your Mohi, you know, I do different sounds and so on. But actually, I always do it in this time. It's not like you do actually with me, I'm not faking that, you know, I, I, I always do this stuff. When I watch anime, even if the camera is not on, I'm still doing that now. Okay, sure, I'm only, no, oh, Papa, no. I'm always doing that Kaguya sound fit in my head, usually with my mouth as well. I often do this stuff. And that's how I very easily remember what the character say, but I'm also immersed into the character, and I try to really empathize and feel like the character, right? And same thing when I play games and so on. And, for example, uh, example is when I play League of Legends, my favorite character is Shaco, to no one's surprise. And when people play them, you know, when they play in my team, they're gonna hear me say like, now you see me, now you don't. They're gonna hear me say that sound effects when I play it. They're like, all right, here it goes again. Yes, yeah. so I keep saying, you know, like the, the character voice lines when I'm playing the character. That's how I get into the character. Right? And it's the same, I mean, I, I think it's so far that when I play like a Street Fighter game, you're gonna see me doing the characters. Like, oh yeah, I'm this character now. You're gonna see me like, oh, Sonic Booming now, yeah. Like I become the character, method acting, right? Method acting, but I use it a lot. I recommend it heavily because it, it does improve my, my again, the empathy, right? For the characters, I do feel the most more. I have a very easy access to crying when I watch anime. That's because I'm trying to always feel the character, but it also gives me understanding of the language, right? And the, again, then, the way I use it a lot is to act, speak like the character. Something I've done in a lot in my life, actually, generally, not watch anime, is that after I hear a great speech, like the Flamingo speech that I really love, and it's like Sega, oh, yeah, yeah, what is that? Yeah, that speak, I probably done myself a hundred times <laughs> afterwards, going around when I walk around, I'm like, yeah, Sega, what does that mean? You know, so that's how I really learn both the quote, but I also learn the story, I remember the story and so on, right? And I learned the words doing that. That's what I would recommend to anyone. Anyway. After you watch an anime, right? You actually think about, right? What were you saying? What was happening? Why is this one? It's just a big thing, right? Now, anyway, now I'll go to the next point here contextualize it. Point number two, right? A very important point, which I use all the time in life. And again, it's also a trick you should use with everything. A trick, but like a method you should always use in life. Seriously, I hate people can't contextualize that information. So for example, if I ask you, how, when do you think most babies are born in Sweden? What month, right? Okay. Without telling you any information really about Sweden, it's only written books and geography, you should, be able, you should be able to answer that question, right? Even if you don't actually know the question, you should be able to assume it. So for example then, how would I contextualize that? Well, uh, most people have vacation during the summer, so there's more mating there. Uh, Midsommar, another cultural events in Sweden is during the summer, right? 
the country is quite cold, so uh, a lot of more, it's a lot more like you know alcohol and a lot more parties on during the summer again more mating. Uh, when has most people weddings are more common are increasing in August because people get pregnant during that thing. So that means that people are probably giving birth during like the spring, right, or like early summer, like spring into yeah, nine, nine months after the summer, right. That's true. We historically speaking, when you had less, uh, I can guess this then, but this is true, but I can guess it, right. Historically speaking, when you had less vacation, more people probably mated during the winter, which means that September used to be a common month because the they work all year round, right? But during the winter, so cold in Sweden, so they would have more, you know, mating right during the winter and then begin birth during September. So you can see how the the baby booming month has swapped from uh, fall to spring instead. And this is all information you should be able to figure out by yourself, honestly, if you have. I'm setting off, you know, some you know, different seasoning, historical aspect, and so on. Uh, you really should, if you have a general understanding of, you know, how society works. Right? I really mean that. Sometimes I don't mean that, but truly, that's contextualizing information, right? By knowing all the stuff about society, I can tell you that. Well, you know, we have this thing and the cultural thing, and then it's cold, and so you know, I do that stuff. Right? How does that then work for anime? Well, in anime, as in most writing fiction. It is super important to have references, right, and different concepts. It's all right. I already mentioned it's about Nico Robin, right? Her powers is, of course, the Hana Hana no Mi, the flower fruit. Her powers is kind of flowery, kind of blooming, right? You have other characters in One Piece. They're all kind of decided. For example, you have Dalton. He has the Ushi Ushi no Mi. There's the Bison powers. So of course, Ushi has to mean either a cow or ox or maybe like a bovine. So you figure that out, right, and so on. So you could also use that to, of course, you know, learn the words, right? How does it work? Why is this power called this thing, right? And there are so many examples of anime where they use this thing, and also then something called telegraphic character design, where they use this thing. And if you then remember how this thing is combined, you can both remember the character's powers, the character's story probably, and also, of course, what the words are in Japanese, right? So you can use all this thing to both easily remember stuff in the storyline, remember their both emotion but also just technically and logically how they work and so on, right? But also then of course the language, right? And why such things is named and so on. So I think it's very, very important. So for example then, but I think honestly this is very, very important. It's really life in general, okay, to learn stuff. Right? Um, so anyway, for example, Sailor Moon, right? Classic anime, I got for Sailor Moon, right? My, you know, uh, obviously Sailor Jupiter, my contact best girl. <laughs> I had, you all, all I had a huge trust on her as a kid, okay? Huge trust. Uh, you say, but anyway, Sailor Moon. No, nah, not Sailor Moon. Anyway, Sailor Moon. Her name is Usagi in Japanese. What does Usagi mean in Japanese? You might ask, right? And I'm like, have you looked at Sailor Moon? Do you see all those like moon, you know, things on the bed? But also the maybe the bunnies. Do you see the bunny slipper shoes, right, on Sailor Moon and so on? Of course, my point here is that her name means bunny, right, or rabbit. So, if you look at a character like Sailor Moon, you're like, well, she's obviously, you know, there's a lot of, like, bunny team there, right? There's a lot of bunny team. Uh, probably her name is something like, you know, bunny, okay, Usagi. And then, of course, you can remember that, okay, so Usagi means bunny, right? So, it's a bit easy to learn, right? Um, and the same thing with so many other kinds, right? So, for example, another way to do it is, of course, it's not actually made uh, to Japanese, but like carrot in One Piece, right? Obviously, next robot member, uh, carrot name of course it's carrot because she's a bunny. They they they, they eat carrots, right? It's a bunny. Uh, this doesn't really help us to learn Japanese, but using that contextual method, right, of in our brain of how to connect the reference one. It helps us to understand, or at least remember that, well, she's some kind of uh, furry that has some kind of, you know, bunny or hair or something, that kind of animal, and she likes carrots because her name is Carrot, right? So it makes it easier to remember her, right? The reference there. And also, because you think about it from a manga, manga perspective, right? Or anime as well. Not only they also have to, you know, help their viewers right, in Japan to remember the character, right? So, of course, most Japanese people, right? Most people in Nihon, they, they know that a carrot is something that bunnies likes. It makes it easier to remember this character, right? So it's like a memory trick to use, you know, make the character 
blir more recognizable for people. In a similar way, another memory trick, right, is the double name, double clicking. For example, you have something like Peter Parker, right? Okay. Easy to remember, right? If you read anything in Marvel, which notes the Big Bang Theory, that almost every character, right, in Marvel has like, you know, Matt Murdock and so on. Easy to remember because it's like dumb, dumb. Uh, so th those kind of memory tricks are so important, right? And in the same way, then, instead of using uh, double autonomy, that you used to think that, okay, her name is Carrot because she eats carrots, right? Okay, so to remember. Another character in an anime and manga to go with, of course, Black Clover. With almost every damn character in Black Clover has some kind of like uh, Talica. You know, I really like uh, Tabata's work in Black Clover in the way that he makes every character be so easy to remember because they almost are telegraphic their design, right? So if there's one manga or anime that is very good at char telegraphic character design, it's Black Clover. So every character in Black Clover basically looks like what they're doing and they're named basically what they're doing, right? So here's example is Fugelong. And fuge means, of course, fire in Espanol, in Spanish, right? So if you didn't know that now, you should know that now, right? It's to remember, he got firepower, he named freaking means fire, his name is freaking fire, it's hot. It's easy to remember, right? Because his name is fuge, fire, okay? And then he's the captain of what? Spoil it, but he's the captain of what? The Crimson Lions, right? His name is Leon, Leo. There's another, you know, Latin for lion, so fire lion, right? Is he the name? Is, yeah. So this is basically everything in Clover, right? But still, I like that. It makes it easy to remember the characters, and that's from, from a reader aspect, right? It's just easier to remember that who is the guy with the firepower. His name is Fire in Spanish, okay? Yami, Captain Yami. Yami means darkness in Japanese, so he has the darkness power. He has black hair, you know. He's kind. Of, <laughs> See what I mean? Like er almost every goddamn character uh, in Black Clover has some kind of like oh, the main the name is their power basically, right? Name name for destiny. But that's a way. If you watch Black Clover, for example, then you should really able to learn those names. Like if you watch Black Clover, and I've asked you what is the word for darkness in Japanese, right? And, and you're like, oh, I don't know, I don't know. And I'm like, so you've seen Black Clover? Yes, you said yes, of course I've seen Black Clover. And they're like, okay. Who's the coolest captain? You're like, Captain Yami, freaking Yami, Yami Taisho, he's impressed. Yeah, you're like, Yami. And I'm like, well, what does Yami mean, right? So honestly, in my opinion, I'm going to be harsh, right? But when I talk to a lot of people, I feel that, how can't you remember that Yami means darkness? His power is freaking darkness, right? Yeah, so that's how your brain should always think. And I really mean it's actually, it's not really animal, but I mean everything. You should be able to contextualize and thematically understand these kind of things. Of course, in any, uh, this is not true for every anime, but I'm just saying that this is true for a lot of anime, and if it's true for the end gaming as well, and when that is happening, you should be able to do that. Uh, other example, uh, okay, Sombra in Overwatch. Also, Sombra I mean probably something with like stealth, something her powers like stealthing, sneaking. It means shadow, right? So you can, you know, can say that. Uh, other character in many games, Kage, you know, is shadow, right? Hokage, yeah, but it's shadow, right? So, and so on. Like my latest game, I have a Ninja character, his name is Kage. Of course, it's like I means shadow, right? And so on. Um, another character in my next game is called Ignis Grander, right? Because it means like both Ignis is, uh, is ice and is fire and ice, yeah, fire and ice power. He got fire and ice power, so you know, Ignis shit, right? Fire and so on, right? Easy to remember. So, all that stuff should always be in your brain, right? To easily learn stuff, right? And uh, again, of course, not every character has its name. Not every character in anime or name or appears or whatever, but a large part of anime character has to take going for them where they actually have a name or an appearance or whatever, right? It actually makes you remember what they are, right? Uh, and so on. And uh, whatever, color scheme, so many different factors. As long as it's there, remember it. Except another example I like, which is a little trickier, but should use the same thing, is... Hokage, right? So no, but Toru Kage, you know, all, you know, old, perfect old grandpa, right? Our beloved old grandpa. So, uh, this is Toru Kage in Naruto. His name is Hiruzen Saratobi. He is, first of all, why should you remember his name? Well, Sasuke Saratobi is a famous um, ninja, like a mythological, historical ninja, right? Of course, his name is based on that guy, right? Saratobi. Uh, Sasuke, then, of course. The main, one of the very famous characters in anime, right? Sasuke. It's also, of course, named after Sasuke Saratobi. You know, 
daughter part of that name. And actually, this person's uh, father then in the history, that his name is Sasuke Saratobi actually, uh, in the actual storyline. Uh, but he hasn't really shown, but like in the... But, um, but so it's one thing there, right? Remember that Sasuke Saratobi, famous ninja. Okay, now you know that. Uh, Sauru. What does Sauru mean? Well, Sauru means monkey. Okay, so Sauru is monkey. You might have to put Sauru, the word. That's the animal word for monkey, right? And then in case, and that's our feed. You're gonna ask some more, right? Talking about monkey, and I'm like, okay, so what is you know Saratobi's power? What he summon? Of course, he summons the monkey guy, right? And my yeah, the monkey guy. So he summons the monkey god guy, right? So that's how your brain should always operate, honestly. And I said, by saying it's not just an anime, but in everything. So if you ask me, what is the word in Japanese for monkey? I would say, oh, it's Sauru. Okay, how do I know that? Well, Luffy is called Sauru a lot, and so on. But also, because I remember that, okay, Saratobi has the power to summon a Sauru, and his name is Sauru, so, you know, even if it's Sauratobi, but still, you know, there's a clear connection there, right? Uh, again, not every character has that Naruto, not everyone has that, but you should be remember it, right? And so Naruto means, you know, spinning world, right? Rasenga, spinning world and so on, also the whole Konoha and the Usumaki clan and so on, right? The whole thing that is spinning, right? Uh, you, should, you should really be able to remember that. So, but but I remember that stuff easily, right? Because I'm using this memory, you know, mythology to always connect something with an image, right? So if you always, so I'm, I'm doing this a lot of you know memory, um, you know, shadows and so on, right? And the same thing there really, when I'm trying to remember something like a long, you know, pi number or something very very long, right? I'm using imagery, right? So I'm like this thing, this thing, this thing, this thing, right? So of course when I see like okay, the word Sauru. I immediately think of Turbo Kaga, right? And that immediately tells me that, okay, summoning monkey. Okay, so, you know, I have an image in my head, right, of him and his summoning, right? If someone asks me, okay, what is snake in Japanese? I have two images. I have Bua Hancock, right? And her sisters, right? The heavy sisters. And I have, of course, also Urushimaru, right? Okay, Urushimaru, snake power, heavy, okay, heavy, manda, so on, okay. I have that kind of memory, right? And going from that, right? Okay, so Kaoru then, frog, right? Yoraya appears, right? And also, of course, the frog in one piece, right? So I have all the images in my head, right? So I can easily connect different kind of contexts, right? Different kind of words. So that's why I can easily tell you, especially different uh, animal names in Japanese, right? Because I've seen a lot of shonen animes. I know all the different, you know, powers, right? And that thing, of course, comes from that, right? Um, but of course, all the things I'm, all, I'm connecting on the same way, right? So if I have something more abstract, like a traitor or, you know, this thing, I'm like, that guy was a freaking traitor, you know. I'm like, yeah, she was a goddamn traitor. I'm calling her this thing. I'm a spoiler, but you know what I mean. So I will also connect those words, right? Right. And the same thing here. If you look at Saki, I'm gonna be like, well, she's a goddamn cool Yankee, right? So I'm like, Yankee. What's that mean? Okay, it means Saki. <laughs> you know, I'm connected to her. Yeah, I'm connecting to all the words around me, right? And I do that for everything now, not just for language, but especially then for different languages. Right? I want to show you Melona, best woman, no, but so Melona, right, in a similar way, I remember easily. Kind of hard name, Merulona, but then I think of, okay, Mero, Meteor, okay, Mero, Meteor, Firepower, Fire Waifu, best wife ever, right? Fire Waifu, her name is Leona, that's female lion, Crimson Lion, Fire Woman, Ultimate Waifu, see what I mean? That's kind of my brain works. Easy to remember Marilona, right? I mean, of course, she's the best wife ever. But also, when I when I see someone not remembering her name, I'm like, what's wrong with you? It's easy to remember. Her name is Leona, lioness, right? She's a female lion, badass character. Her power is fire. She, she, she throws me to yours. Her name is like Meryl. And also, it means Latin is, is soldier in Latin. And she's like a goddamn good soldier, right? So, all that in my brain connects, right? And I'm like, Marilona, ultimate wife, meet your powers. It's not more harder than that. Another example of that is just combining different words, right? Which I think is very easy to learn Japanese because Japanese is a lot about combining words. So this here is the flower viewing, right? Sakura blossom in Japan, you know, cherry, yeah, blossoms, so on. So for example, if someone asks me, okay, what is this he called Japanese? I'm going to be like, okay, earlier we mentioned that Nikoro being used in Hana. Okay, so Hana means flower. So it's probably something like Hana, right? I have my One Piece contextual and also of course learning One Piece, right? Yeah, from the and then I know, then, okay, so that's in my head, okay. And then I know that, like, mega, okay, megane, megane, that's like an insult. 
to be someone it's like a nerd it's like glasses right so megan yeah that's like you have you know your nerdy glasses guy usually an insult could also just be you know nothing but usually insult, right so and then i know that okay so me and okay so me there that's like something like viewing or something right so like then i remember okay me, me me and then i combine that with my flower knowledge it's okay hana so that's like hana me okay that's flower view right that's how your brain should really work you should be able to be able to understand this words and remember the new words, right? By combining different information in your head. For a sam for a similar way, uh, when I watch something like again Naruto, you know, the Sharingan, right? Sharingan and means something with ice. And then you have something like uh, Tenyu Tenge when they have the Ryogan instead of like something there, like Dragon Eyes. So you know, it's remember it's the same word, gun, yeah. So I have to combine that, right? You have to always think like that. Uh what's other side of this thing? For example, um Kane means money, right? So when I see Kane, who do I see in my head, guys? Uh, I have a hair over there, I have three of them over there. I see, of course, sexy Nami. I have like five Nami figures over there. <laughs> so in my head, I'm like, Kane, and also Okane, I'm like, ah, oh, money, yeah, okay. This Nami appears in my head, and I'm like, yeah, money grabber, <laughs> right? And so Kane is gold, you know, Kane is gold, Okane is, is money, right? So you put the O for it. Um, so that is how I, you know, picture, you know, money. I'm like, yeah. Freaking Nami is giving that In that sense, right? You should always be able to use that kind of way. Uh, it's very important. Though. Japanese honorifics. It's gonna be number three. So you should learn this thing from watching anime, right? Number one step there. Uh, when someone talks to their mother, they're gonna say like, you know, Okasan, Okasama, Okashan, Kashan, or like Haha, or Mama, so on, right? And you should, of course, then learn that, right? As I talked about earlier, right? from you doing that. So that's one thing. But why is it important to learn them? This is very important to learn, I say primarily here, to watch anime, okay? So in real life, in Japan and so on, I mean, yes, this thing is used, but it's mostly people are used in like a workplace or whatever, right? Or in the town, people are saying, you know, the more san, sama, kun, you know, school, yeah, that's kind of it, right? But in anime, though, we have what is relationship. It is very, very important to actually understand these kind of words because they tell you so much about like the dynamic between two or more characters and actually I, I found this thing in the language itself Japanese is actually very nice because you can so easily explain how someone is relating someone else which is much harder in old languages so for example if someone says Aniki that's like bro you know it's like you know brother but it's much more than that you know yeah bro yeah like Aniki it's more that way right like some kind of gang or something right where Unishan, right, or Unisan, and there is different kind of version of you know older brother, right? Nisan's like kind of the same kind of younger brother, and Ototo is like younger brother. Emoto is younger sister. Where Nisan is sister, right? Could be young, could be older, and Unishan is older, right? And they have like Anisan, which is also like hey sister, kind of like also kind of you know the Yankee kind of like you know, Nisan, kind of like that, right? So knowing the different stuff easily makes watching anime raw so much easier. So when I started watching anime also one i was like maybe 13 14 12 maybe around that age i thought i was watching anime raw right and during that time then again it really had a lot just easily understanding that okay when this girl here speaks to her friends she's like anisha hey Ane, yeah yeah you know because they're kind of like yankee you know girls kind of you know kind of badass girls right and that tells you so much about their um, dynamic right so not i wouldn't i wouldn't say this thing is like the if you want to actually go to Japan with that, right? This thing isn't as important. You should remember, you know, the, remember the big ones, you know, Sam, Sam and so on, right? But watching anime, it really helps because the characters have, they have like 20, 20, 30 different honorifics. And it is one of the first words you should learn when watching anime. It is these words, right? You, will, you should learn them, as I mentioned, by watching anime. But learning these different things like Ototo, Imoto and so on. It equal to and that kind of stuff is gonna help you a lot, right? And also gonna help you with the comedy. So I feel there's a lot of different stuff, right? Where you have characters and it doesn't translate to English or whatever. Like for example, this is Leonora, right? Very hot waifu, very nice. <laughs> yeah, this is God damn Alice, God. Alice needs more screen time anyway. This is that so can you saw my character? Okay, she's pouting, man. She's soft. And when she is introduced or first time you see her kind of with Erina, right? The main woman in Soma, she calls her Obasan, right? Obasan, Obasan, you know, she's like auntie, you know, auntie, hey, hey, auntie, kind of like that nice, right? But 
I, I, yo generally with Lenoa, she can't speak Japanese. She's a really bad Japanese speaker. So she's like, you called me grandma? Uh, granny? You just screw you, I hate you, you kid. Yeah. Because it's actually a similar word, right? With Oba and Oba. So it's, a, it's kind of like it's 1A or 2A, basically. <laughs> so that, that's a hard suffix generally, right? Because they're, they're very, very similar. They're, they're very, very similar. It's like Oba, 1A, or Oba is 2A, right? So like that's actually one of the worst ones, but yeah. Uh, but of course, transit in that, like, how do you do it right? I mean, I can tell you exactly what she's saying in Japanese. I'm like, yeah, she's saying this thing, this, this thing, that's that thing, right? But the yoke itself, it must not write in English, it's like, um, she called her auntie. She's like, hey, auntie. And she's like, grandma, you calling me grandma? I'm gonna kick your ass, stupid kid. And it's like, uh, yeah, that doesn't really translate at all, <laughs> right? Like, how, how will she mishear the word? On the you see what I mean, right? And this is fixed, it does it all the time. It's actually the exact same yoke in Tenshi Moyu, actually. Tenshi Moyu in Gipesti, yeah. When he calls Tenshi is Baba Baba. Who actually in that anime, uh, he does the opposite, <laughs> which I like, yeah. So in Tenshi Moyu, um, when Seiya figures out that Tenshi's grandma, so his bar, his Oba, right? Oba, uh, he's like, she's very attractive. She's like, you know, an alien. She's like very hot for being a grandma, right? So when he figures out that this is his cousin's grandmother, he talks to her, he's like, what, his grandma? But you're 20 years old, it doesn't make any sense. He's like, are you calling me a grandma? She's like, he keeps like, surely I am young and attractive. He's like, oh no, I didn't say grandma. I said auntie, I said, you know, the ba. I was like, oh, Shan. No, you didn't, yes, I did. You know, so he kind of puts it in the opposite order. Yes, he calls her grandma, but he claims that he said, no, I only use one A, don't hurt me, auntie. You're so hot for... You're definitely like maximum 25, yeah, so you know. So, you see the kind of yoke back and forth, right? And of course, as well there, that yoke is also hard to translate because it's like, well, he called her grandma and she gets angry at him and then he lies and said, no, I said uh, auntie. So, you know, you can't be angry at me. I said the word, yeah, like, doesn't really translate, right? Uh, so, I think a lot of the time, generally, when you learn Japanese, as in any language, right? There is the language thing to enjoy it more. But also, of course, this is a different video, right? But also the culture is also, of course, important, right? When you learn the culture and you understand the different, you know, the language and the yokes also get better, right? Of course it does. It's not a thing. But just learning the language, like this kind of stuff, makes those suffix jokes and generally the behavior is so on funny, right? Um, and it's understand. But anyway, so I think, again, not super important, actually, if you just want to learn, like, a professional language Japanese. But for watching raw anime, Jesus Christ, you, if you learn this stuff, it gives you so many easier things to do. To see it, to catch and immediately, you know that she is like, hey sis, okay, that's kind of relationship. Or he's like, you know, oh, Udo-sama, okay, so the more honorable, you know, father. Where someone is like, papa, or, you know, you know mama, you know, it's more, the more casual, the more friendly, probably in your family, right? Where someone is like, Okasama, it's the more, you know, honorable, yes, mother, that's the queen, you know, kind of like that, you know. So you get different feelings still how they relate to each other and so on. So very important to learn, because even if you don't speak uh, you know, the language perfectly, right, knowing these uh, suffixes, it really helps you a lot to use easily. Again, then, of course, understand the dynamics, which helps you understand the contextual storyline, right? even if you don't understand every single word. And one thing, I thought about later here, but you should really watch, you know, right, and so on, right, and learn it, because even if you don't understand every word, the next step of actually learning language generally, and any language, is that, by understanding like 80% of the words, I can now understand the other words inside, you know, like, okay, that's my, that's my next video, but basically, when I started reading Japanese, I could read, okay, I can't read every kanji, but I can read like 8 out of 10, so I can assume what other two are right, by just, yeah, it's like, it has to be this thing, based on the context of the story, right, or whatever, so, that thing too, right, when you learn this again, when you learn the honorifics, it's really easy to understand that, okay, I don't speak every word here, but I understand that this character here is talking to her father, and it's a very like, yes, uh, honorable father, and it's like, you know, very this thing, and then I can I probably assume what other words are in between, right? So I think it's a good help for that thing. Um, but, so the next thing then, generally of course, is that the course was anime raw, right? You just go for it, right? No, but I really mean that because I think this is probably one of the hardest steps <laughs> in the end, I guess. That you have to also be like, well, I mean, go for it. It's kind of like people have to be, you know, you have to actually try, right? 
a lot of people are afraid of it and don't understand it. I think it generally helped me when I was a kid. The, of course, the main thing why I would why I would watch anime raw is because I was watching hentai, right? Come on, you should be honest here. That's how it started. I was like, well, no one is subbing this hentai. I better watch it. <laughs> I, can, I, got, I got no option. That's usually how it starts right now, but um, it helps. And uh, as I mentioned, when you're watching this stuff is in transit and so on, or you want to watch it immediately and so on, right? It helps you because you have to be like, okay, I now understand, let's say, 50% of the words, okay? I'll be doing step one a lot. So I learn the different phrases, I learn different stuff. I'll be doing step two a lot, so I memorize the different uh, Hana or Usi or uh, you know Usagi, and I would learn a different vocabulary. Okay, I learned a glossary. So I've done that, memorize all the glossary in power and so on. And I okay, I've done the honorifics, so I understand all the context of different dynamics of Sintel, okay? So I'm doing that stuff. But so I don't understand everything that they're saying, but I guess most of it, okay watch the raw anime right because now even if i want to speak half of the words okay and say half you know it's a pretty nice 50 percent with that i can still understand the dynamic of the storyline the, the thematic of storyline and then i can assume what the other words are kind of as i mentioned right and it's kind of important right because you have to take into that step when you do it right one thing i have to say i, I, I was bad at myself right Maybe because I learned anime. <laughs> no, but I learned it through anime. But one of the typical things that, you know, oh, get a pen pad or speak to someone online or, you know, that kind of thing, yeah. Um, and the, the hardest thing is always to speak it, right? Um, I see it with, this is not really ready to reappropriate, I guess, but I see it with so many other people, right? People that are not speaking English, for example, that I'm from Sweden, right? But I see, when I am, you know, out with, some family members, right, in some other countries, not when I was a kid, but very, not very recently, but I was growing up, right. Uh, some of, you know, people, they, they, they know the English, they know the words, but they don't have that, they don't want to speak it, right. They're like, yeah, I mean, I know the words, yeah. Uh, we are, of course, I was always a very outgoing, extrovert person. I would just speak English, right? I was like 13, I'm like, hey, yeah, bro, yeah, I will just do my horrible, uh, you know, I will just do my horrible, uh, swing list, right? But I will still do it, right? And then you will just learn the language better too. So it's kind of like that. You have to just grab the book by the horn eventually, right? Of course, I wouldn't say you should start by doing that. But honestly, I would even go so far that you should be able to learn uh, simple honorific, right? And all, all the stuff by Ian with Ross. You can learn that, okay, Han Han Nomi obviously means uh, flower because she says that and they explain her power. So yeah. So anyway, that's the video, guys. You know, Leave a comment below around what you think. Um, the next video, I'm talking about a little bit more how I learned to read. Uh, I have a gamification system for that, and also then playing uh, magic games. Um, reading that, then going into reading, you know, raw manga and so on, right? Like I say, immediately, but I think one of the easiest things, or the easiest maybe, but one of the ways I learned kanji, for example, to some extent, is that I would learn uh, the basic of Japanese language, right? And then I would read uh, a manga. And when I say manga, you know, I mean, Manga, you know, manga. <laughs> I was like, when I say manga, you know what I mean, yeah, manga. I would read manga, and I was like, yeah, oh, yeah, okay, it says that in there, okay, yeah. So, obviously, when I would read this stuff, right, I'd be like, okay, so this is the words, and then I'd be like, okay, the next word is this thing, I think. So then the kanji is probably means this thing, right? So, not the best way to do it, of course not, uh, not the most methodical way to do it, but that's one way um, I learned to read, just by being, okay, I can read like 8 out of 10 words, so I guess the other two words has to be, by context, right, they have to mean this thing, or something like that, right, and usually I would actually put the word in, and I would be like, okay, I'm gonna Google that word, and see what it means, and see I'm right, but the thing is that, usually I am right, you know, so I'm guessing, I'm, I'm assuming it's this thing, similar to things I mentioned earlier, with like, you know, freaking like birth rate, right, in this, in, in a country, it's like, well, in this country here, it's like cold, and then it's warm here, and people probably are mating more during hot season because it's like more pot and so on. Uh, and also, or, or, or when they're indoor, it's probably the worst when it's either not indoors and not partying, like the like the fall, it's probably the worst, right? Because it's, it's, it's no Christmas party and so on, it's also no summer party, it's just kind of like a brainy fall. Okay, that's probably like really bad, so it's probably not the money there. And you know, you can get the, yeah, that kind of should always be in your head, right? Um, if anything. So um, I do this kind of similar uh, language, not really language, right? But I usually do with teach people all the stuff, right? Um, still though, this is how I learned a lot of languages.
So anyway, subscribe guys, press the like button, and I'll see you guys uh, probably next week or so, roughly next week. Do another video, talk a little bit more about the language, right? The textual language one, and um, some more stuff. But generally, I want to emphasize here that this all the methods I'm using, right? Is all about contextualizing things mainly to learn and remember stuff and all critical and stuff. And I do that for everything, right? So that's how I remember everything, basically. But I, I have a very good memory, you know, and I'm like a have a famously incredible good memory, honestly. And the thing is that when someone asked me, it's like, okay, who was uh, this king in this war? I was like, well, the League Wars was about this and this thing, and this guy is called Lion of the North because he was from this country and he did this stuff. He he has this over here, nothing was doing. It. So that's kind of how my brain works. I'm almost like, do, do, do. I'm almost being this map, right? And the thing is that every time I say something like that, Lion of the North, when I say that, what do you envision? Right? When I say it in my head, I am actually watching, I'm seeing this painting in my head. When I'm saying the word, lie not to know what, I see this painting of this man riding a horse in this war. Right? I'm literally watching that painting in my head. Right? I see the perfect image of the painting. I could draw you a painting right now, right? Uh, saying that name. Right? So I connected that name to that thing. Uh, for example, um, when I used to, um, when I was playing, I don't know, just a great separate, but when I was, uh, like 13 I was yeah I was playing Advance War Advance Wars when I was 13 and I was watching these animes I was playing on my Game Boy Advance right so I watched the animes at the same time if you ask me uh, you know okay what happens this episode of this anime not only can I tell you okay this character dies this 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 again I can also tell you what stage I was on in Advance Wars so I'm like okay this thing and, you know and of course if I if you take it all the way right if I play Advance Wars today I can memory, I can memorize, or I can, I, my, I can flashback and recall the animes I watched during playing that game because I was doing it at the same time. Right? So I can connect the memory of the screen here to that screen there and be like, this thing's happening, right? uh, and so on. And so, for example, I can also hear you know music and I can remember sound effects the same way, and also smell. Right? So, for example, I'm very good at this sounds crazy now, but the same thing here. Like, I know how people are. Um, how they smell right because I remember this guy has this kind of smell right uh, I do the same thing that people with smell and also one thing I do a lot as people when I work with and so on is that I listen to how they work so I, I memorize uh, everyone's you know uh, rhythmic how they walk right the steps and so on and uh, so I can close my eyes and I can always know who's around me by listening to how they how they walk right and the same thing then if I you know if I'm dodgy or fight someone I can look at the legs and be like okay it's a good thing uh, all that right, is the memory thing, right? I'm using different kind of senses, right? I'm remembering how someone speaks, uh, or whatever, right? Or what the point was, or whatever, by memorizing their uh, the rhythm in their voice, right? Their voice lines on how they speak up and down, but also their body language, their feet, and if they did something else, right? So I was, I'm always combining that different stuff right so for example i have i can i can recall a, a memory like a meeting i had with my professor like 15 years ago right because i can remember how he was doing his pants he was doing these yellow shoes he was doing this stuff and he was doing that stuff right so by memorizing everything around uh, what was being said right i can still memorize all the words of being said so i can recall the whole meeting and everything he was teaching by uh, doing that stuff right it's the same thing it goes to lecture right for lecture I'm gonna listen to the words, but I'm also gonna memorize. Okay, not only were the words being written here, like or like this, um, um, like a math lecture, right? So okay, he wrote this formula. Where did he write it? He wrote it on the left side. So you know, in, in a typical lecture hall, right, they have like nine or even more uh, blackboards, right? So it's like he used the left third one to the left to write this Euler's whatever, right? and then he used the one to the further to the right to write, uh, I don't know, Rileigh sector or something horrible like that, yeah. And I can not only tell you the formulas, but I can even tell you where I read them on in this room. I can get over there, that was over there, that one's down there, that was like a blue pen, that was a yellow pen, that was a white pen. Yeah. So all of that, right, I use to memorize this kind of formula and so on. So again, not only do I memorize like a math formula, right, but okay, these are the numbers, I memorize it, okay, what was the color of the text, right? What was, where is the written, right? And it's the same thing, so when I studied down for like my different degrees, right? Uh, and why I think well, I was good at it, it's because I would be like, okay, I'm gonna read this math book here, okay? I'm gonna understand it. I'm gonna listen to this music here on the same time, right? And 
if I hear this song, I can now recall this math formula. Because I memorized this math formula with this song, right? So when, I, when I'm doing the exams, I'm gonna like think on that song. I'm like, ah, this formula, is it this thing? I'm like, oh yeah, I'm like, da, 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 okay, yeah, I know, okay, I don't know the yeah. So I would use the music, right, to memorize that as well. And that's the contextual memory, right? I use different kind of things, right, to memorize anything. And again, then, it's even easier, right, if you have by, done by the author, right? You say thing in like my own games, right, or whatever thing, I work the motor projects. When I do a game or uh, anime and production and trailers so or one that I worked on, it's the same thing there. I'm gonna be like, well, this character, his name is like uh, Jonas, because he's a deceiver. Jonas is the Roman mythology god of two faces, right? So this character is gonna be a full story because he has both genders, because he's a Jonas, like it makes sense. It's kind of a susceptibility, like right? So I'm using that kind of thing right? to memorize everything much easier, right? And uh, it's a red line team through it, right? Yeah. That right, so that's why I think hopefully people can watch the video and also think about how do you learn stuff like so that's how i learn or it's memory it's more memory than learning uh but it's, it's a mix right it's memory how you remember stuff but i also think it's learning because as i mentioned earlier by us critical critically analyzing everything and any information you, you're given right you also learn it better because if you criticize criticize and critique this formula you're questioning why does it work you can always be like, okay, I, and then if you try to, you know, you trust out, okay, it actually does work, then you believe in it more, then you're consuming and accepting it, right? That's how your brain should work. Your brain should be questioning it and reflect over it, and then eventually understand. Same thing with language, right? Why is the cat saying Asa Gohan? How is that connected to the storyline? Why is it saying Asa? What's Gohan? What does that mean? How does it, you know, how does it relate to these characters? Uh, why is it is the guy's mom or is it someone else why is that thing happening uh, and so on right um, and I guess the same thing next video but I guess the same thing when I see a Japanese kanji I'm always going to have the image of like okay that kanji there that's like uh, soy okay it's like su okay it's like water or something like that that means water bullet in, in, in Naruto it's kind of like how my brain works like okay, that thing do okay it's like earth okay so that's like that thing you know, like I mentioned earlier, like Okane, you know, it's like, okay, there's Nami, money, right? So anyways, see you guys and have a great day.